Radio for All. You are now live with the Humble Prince on Sahara FM Radio. Yeah. Guess who's Bazak? Live with the Humble Prince on Sahara FM Radio. Just want to say that tonight's show is brought to you by Vizlan Entertainment Presents Basket Mouth in New York City. June 27, that's something you don't want to miss. Also, guys, check out Like My Job this weekend, man. BB Kings, man. If you're in New York City, New Jersey, Connecticut, everywhere, make sure you want to come out, man. We got to support our own. Uh, but right now, that was a fantastic interview we had with Miss Nigeria USA beauty pageant, Francis Aduka. But right now, we have another beautiful <laughs> uh, Miss Nigeria USA pageant in the house. And this is the beautiful Wurala Kolawali. Please, let's give Wurala a round of applause. And you're representing? I'm representing Ekiti State. Ekiti State. Family state of origin. Oh, fantastic. So this yes. is like a true, true representation. Yes, yes. Finally, man. <laughs> I had uh, some lady from Imo State representing Ondo State. But, you know, I think yeah. we're all trying to promote this Nigeria is one thing and everything. So that was exactly a beautiful woman. Thank you. Man. Yeah. Okay. Like, back to what you were saying, we're promoting yes. cultural yeah. diversity. So some of the people who are representing the states are not actually from the state. But Thank you. That was the word I was That's the beauty for. of it. Yeah. So, so you women's, though, I got I to gotta give it up to y'all, man. You guys are not just, like I said, beautiful, man. I mean, you, know, you guys are very articulate. I mean, have good diction, command of the, good command of the English language. It's fantastic. So, uh, tell us what the platform and um, you know Miss Nigeria USA means to you. Well, first and foremost, the platform for Miss Nigeria USA is basically based around women empowerment and education. So that's everything it, that we do is centered around women empowerment and education. And right. whoever takes on the crown is going to be doing different initiatives that are catered towards women empowerment and education. So Definitely. it's very important that. That's what we, we want to promote. So, And being Miss Nigeria USA is something that's going to be very important to me. I think that it's an opportunity for me to inspire young women on a grander scale. Fantastic. Currently, in what I do right now, I inspire people. So I think that having the crown of Miss Nigeria USA would be something that would be a global yeah. Inspiration. So uh, I will, yeah, yeah. I it would be it would be awesome. Yeah, you definitely yeah. inspiring people because you're inspiring me right now. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me stop. Let me get in trouble. So what do you? So sorry. Tell us. So what, tell us a little bit about yourself. What do you do? Um, right now I work as a salon and freelance hair professional. Um, when I say hair professional, it's not limited to just being a hairstylist. Um, I'm also an entrepreneur. I have my own hair company, and I'm also an educator for um, a brand that's catered towards the curlier textures. So. In addition to styling clients' hair, I also educate professionals and I also sell hair. So anything that encompasses a hair professional, that's basically what I do. Damn, so this yeah. is not just your average hairstylist that works in the beauty side. No. Beauty salon, <laughs> the beauty parlor. This is, you know, you got to go to school, get a degree, yes. all that. Really? Yes. Yeah, um, I'm a licensed professional. I've been a licensed professional since 2009. So I'm legit, you know, as people would say, like, I know my stuff. I know the science behind hair. Right. I know everything about hair. And I also have a degree. I went to Rutgers University. Check um, you out. I took up English and I minored in education because I had aspirations of being a a teacher. Um, I'm not working in the schools right now, but what I do currently, I'm serving as an educator. So I'm still working in my field, just not in the traditional yeah. capacity. Damn, so. I, 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 right off the bat, and that's what I said, I knew yeah. you went to school for English. Like I oh, said, yeah. I think you have good diction and good, good command of the English language. That's fantastic. And yeah. you know the hair business is booming. That's oh, a yeah, lot of, definitely. And yeah. I think that's why I'm where I am right now, because if you would have told me five years ago that I would have been doing what I've been doing, what I'm doing right now, I probably would have looked at you and said, oh, yeah, right. Yeah, but yeah. because the hair industry has taken off like it has, I, I, w I would have been dumb if I would have went the other route. And even in Nigeria, like you see all of these booming makeup artists and hairstylists, they're yeah. doing their thing. Oh, and yeah. I'm like, I have to tap into that industry. And it's more than just being a hairstylist behind a chair. When you do people's hair, you inspire them. Like a lot of my clients come into my chair and they're down and out. They have a lot going on. Yeah. They may have got, gone through a breakup or they have an interview and it's my duty to make them feel beautiful. Right. So it's more than just styling hair. It's making that person feel beautiful. And I can't tell you how many times people have called me and said, you know, where are you? You did your thing. You really made me feel confident. And I think because you did my hair, you know, I was able to walk with my head held high. You know, nice. they have a, a different aura about them. And that's always an amazing feeling. And I think in that same respect, I could do that, you know, in yeah. the Miss Nigeria USA. Like the same man, uh, yeah. bartenders, <laughs> bartenders and barbers are the best uh, yeah. counselors, man. I know, same thing. So you mm -hmm. do men's hair too or just women's? I do men's hair. All right. Um, when can I book not... an appointment? <laughs> 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 Whenever you're ready. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. But yeah, I do everyone's hair. I do men's hair, women's hair. They're not oh. my primary um, 
clientele, but yeah. I do. If you walk into my chair, I'll hook you up. I'll take care of you. Well, what can you hook me up with? Can I get I'll like a little... I'll give you a, a nice t- fade. Like you want little... some color? We can throw some no, color no, there. No, no, color. Okay, Hello. no color. <laughs> Maybe a nice little tape or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't I'll know. take care so, of you. Yeah, so, so being that you were uh, here... I don't want to say, what, what is your title again? I'm a hair professional. Hair professional, yes. man. So what do you think about the whole debate with natural and weaves and stuff like that? Well, going back to me being a hair professional, yeah. at the end of the day, I don't have a team natural or a team weave. Right. I promote natural hair. I mean, sorry, I promote healthy hair. I okay. always tell all my clients, whatever your decision is, if you want to be natural, if you want to be relaxed, keep the integrity of your hair. That should be your first and foremost. That should be your focus. If your hair is not healthy, then it really doesn't matter if you're natural or relaxed. And I think that it's unfortunate that African American women separate themselves. Yeah. It's already bad enough that we are, and I don't want to say that I'm just basing off of what society says. It's already yeah. bad enough that we have to live as African Americans. Yeah. And I think that for us to separate ourselves even further, it's unfortunate. And it's yeah. like, there should be no reason why I should look at you differently because your hair is styled yeah. a certain way. Sorry, so yeah. it, it shouldn't be like that. I'm sorry you were distracted by our camera, man. Every time, <laughs> no, it's okay, I've it's never okay. seen Nick come in here so much, man. Every time <laughs> there's a beauty pageant in here, He's got to, got to come check the cameras. Oh, he got to make sure everything goes smoothly. Nick, stop. So, you know, Nick, shout stop out to him. Nick, stop man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Big shout, shout out, out to him. Nick, man. Big shout out to the whole team back there. You, you saw oh, the whole yeah, team back there. Oh, yeah, you guys are doing your thing. Yeah, those guys are fantastic, man. Yeah. Smooth. Yeah, um, so I, I just want to say that... Uh, yeah, fantastic. So if you, t- to be honest with you, I don't care, man. That's women, team natural, team yeah. weave, well, whatever. As long as you look good and you feel comfortable, you know, yes. within yourself, man. Right. You know, then it, it really shouldn't right. matter. So uh, another question I, I just want to ask you: Where do you see yourself ten years from now? Ten years from now, um, I see a lot of things. I see myself having successful businesses, okay. multiple businesses All here right. and abroad. Um, that's something that's really near and dear to me. I really want to start business in Nigeria, so that's something that I'm actually working on little by little so that I can establish those networks and connections so that in time I can have some businesses like um, hair salons, beauty schools, mm. um, anything that's going to help to help the, the economy in Nigeria and here. I think that starting sowing a seed by creating jobs is the best thing that you can do and you can educate people along the way so that's something that i see in 10 years um hopefully i'd be married in 10 years um there's a lot of different things i see in 10 years i also want to be a house a a household name in um, the the beauty industry as well as you know the nigerian community as well too that's one of the reasons why i wanted to do miss nigeria usa because i want to get a little bit closer to my community i'm I'm heavily involved but i feel as though i can be a lot more involved so in 10 years i i want to be you know synonymous with you know a nigerian philanthropist, someone who is well involved in the Nigerian community. So those Definitely. are just a few of my goals. Fantastic. And I think yeah. even, uh, I wish you could, um, all the best of success in the um, pageant, even if you win Thank or you, you don't win. I think, <laughs> you know, I think you're really focused and you're yeah. goal-oriented. I think you're, um, you're definitely uh, definitely going places. So yeah. I wanted I wanted to uh, ask you something because, um, you know, the yeah, the other contestant I was here was that, um, you know, I have this platform, the radio, and, uh, you know, as much as I like to have fun with it, but I like yeah. to impact some change. And one of the things I'm talking about is uh, domestic abuse and, you know, mm-hmm. how we could create awareness to end violence against women. Uh, what are some of the ideas that you could share about that? To, in terms of, like, how I can bring awareness to, to domestic yeah, or how we can, abuse. Like, you know, how we can even just end it. <laughs> Let it just end. In a perfect world, we'd be able to end domestic abuse, but unfortunately, and this is not to sound pessimistic, that's not something that we could do right away, but I think that it's important to shed light on it. And I think that... I I don't mean to interject, but exactly what you just said. And that's why... Um, I don't think it's ever going to end, to be honest with you. But we could educate people and create awareness around it. So please go ahead. And I think that we need to stop being so numb to the issue. I think because it happens so often, people kind of brush it under the rug. When you look at celebrities who are victims of domestic abuse, they kind of just say, like, oh, well, you know, maybe she provoked him. And we need to stop making excuses because whether or not the woman or the man is the aggressor, it's never okay. And I think because it happens so often, people have become numb to it. They become indifferent and they accept it. And I think we need to go back to that place where we're not only slapping people on the wrist, like we're doing whatever we need to do to make sure that it doesn't happen again. We need to be a little bit more harsh with our punishments and that's not to say you know send them away for years but we need to make sure that when they are finished serving their sentence or going through whatever counseling they need to that they won't repeat these offenses because you often see these people doing the same kind of patterns like you know not to name names but you know celebrities like Chris Brown or Floyd Mayweather who have had history of domestic abuse after five months people forget about it because you know they won this big title or they sold an album and it's like it's never okay so 
I think we just need to stop being so numb to it. We need to really put it out there and let people know that this is not okay. Because right. if it was our brother, our sister, our mother, we would be ready to fight. We'd be out there with our pitchforks, you know? So it's important that we we, we don't put our foot down so quickly about it. Like right. We have to really be adamant. Yeah, keep our foot on the gas. But here's, yeah. here's the thing, though, um, to what you said. Um, at least in America, they have laws, you know? Yeah. The awareness was more, you know, like in Nigeria, where they're no, I mean, they're laws, but they, they're yeah. not enforced and everything. So, yeah. you know, to what you just said, you know, talking about Chris Brown and Mayweather, don't you think they deserve a second chance? Oh, yeah, definitely. Okay. Like, I'm, <laughs> yeah, I... I'm I'm not the perfect person. You're yeah, not yeah. the perfect person. So I definitely Please. do believe that that they deserve a second chance. Right. I just I don't like the way that people are just brushing it under the rug. Like right. this is something serious. And at the same time, I just think that there could be a lot more that can be done. Okay. Like you know, when Chris Brown had that altercation with Rihanna, I think he did like five months of five years of community service. But the community service consisted of maybe waving to a few students or just doing some right. stuff on the side of the work. Like I feel like he should have receive counseling or anything further and this is just based on what i heard like you know i'm sure he probably did receive more counseling and stuff but yeah. i just feel like there should be more kind of efforts like yeah he also got so. you know he also got slayed by the public you know there was oh definitely, yeah definitely um public condemnation for that so but, but that's, that's the i just want to see and you know one of the things i've been you know talking to people about is when they say that um you know uh, women actually do some of the domestic abuse as well, yeah. you know, so that's something we need to um, talk about. But it's a reality. <laughs> yes, reality. But uh, thank yeah. you. So you in a relationship? I am not in a relationship. I'm in a relationship oh. with one guy and his name is Jesus. <laughs> but no, I'm not in a relationship right now. I am yeah. not. No. I was going to say, I was, I was, <laughs> Nick, why did, <laughs> Nick, Nick, you're not her type, man. <laughs> no, let me stop. But, um, Really, um, I remember I was hosting the St. Valentine's Day show, and um, you know, I was telling those people that, uh, you know, I asked some women if you don't have a Valentine's, Jesus is your Valentine. They of said, course. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, right. Jesus don't got time for that. But, I, <laughs> I'm just joking. but uh, uh, again, uh, thank you for coming on the show. Um, hope you thank had you for a, having me. Yeah, definitely. Well, you know, I didn't have you yet, but we're, we're talking about <laughs> Well, it. thank you for allowing me <laughs> yeah, to say, kick it with you. Yeah, please. thank you for <laughs> having the show. But um, so before you leave, uh, like, you, you know, one thing I like to do is just ask people uh, to give us an exclusive about themselves. But, you know, what we can't find in the blogs on Facebook, tell us something about yourself that Nobody knows. An exclusive about me. Yeah. Wow. Um, I don't want to say that I'm an open book, but because I I guess I do a lot with the public, with you know, public, doing right, hair so and things like that. Right. Um hmm. This is not really anything interesting, but when I was yes. younger, I had an imaginary friend and she was like my <laughs> best friend. <laughs> Her name was Katie. And um really? yeah. Okay. And like, you know, if she was real, she would have been like my best friend. But that's probably something that I don't really tell people because people would think I'm crazy. But like we used to have conversations and I think growing up and looking back, I think Katie was kind of like my conscience or something like, you right. know, someone who doesn't judge me, someone who just listens to me. So that's something, I guess, that people don't yeah. know. I used to have an imaginary friend. I'm not weird. I'm not crazy. You hey, know. Don't worry about it, man. Some people still have imaginary <laughs> friends, and they're old <laughs> to this day. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's probably your uh, um, alter ego, maybe. Yeah, and I guess yeah. you could say that, yeah. Alter yeah. ego, you know. You know what, that's what I'm, you know. I think, so the next time, you know, uh, they go through my phone and they see me, uh, Maybe texting other uh, chicks. I'm gonna be like, you know, that's just my that's old my <laughs> That's oh, my imaginary friend. <laughs> <laughs> good one. That's a good uh, one. Nah, let me stop now. Uh, fantastic. <laughs> so, uh, please, uh, the floor is yours. If there's anybody you'd like to acknowledge or give a shout out, please. Uh, let's go. Um, well, first and foremost, I definitely want to acknowledge you, Humble Prince. Thank you for allowing me to just share my platform definitely, and talk man. about the pageant. Yes. Um, yes. I don't really have anyone in particular. I want to just shout out my family, anyone who supported me during this journey. Um, right. God, of course, you know, without him, nothing, none of possible. this would have been possible. Yeah. Um, and that's just about it. I'm just excited for the event. Hopefully it all goes. I know it'll all go, it's well, gonna go so well. This is the first. I've been telling yeah. Joe we have oh, to hit yeah. it out in the park. And it's, that's it's the first. And it's, it's, it's right. going to take off. Like people are already talking about how they yeah. can do next year. So yeah. it's, it's going to take off. Definitely. So I'm, I'm excited. Um, shout out to, to everyone. Anyone, like I said, anyone who's supporting me, yeah. you know, even just sending me well wishes, praying for me. You know, a lot of people have donated. My sponsors, I would have not have been able to do what I'm doing without yeah. them. So oh, I'm so, really appreciative. Right. So um, is this your first pageant too? This is my second pageant. I did okay. a, a previous pageant while I was at college. Um, 
that was the first time I ever did a pageant. Because prior to that, I used to look at pageants as so superficial. Like, I'm not about to stand up there and be scrutinized <laughs> by these judges, you know? But yeah. after I looked into it, I was just like, wow, like, these people that I'm meeting, they're all like-minded. They're all right. intelligent. Right. They all are concerned about the betterment of the organization or whatever they're promoting. So, yeah, yeah this this is my second pageant. Definitely. So uh, I'll definitely do more, you know, no matter what the outcome. Because cool. I, I like what it, it stands for. It has a Definitely. great meaning and behind I, it. Yeah, and I think once you have a title behind you, you could actually impact change and, you yes. know, do a lot of things, you know, with your prominence and everything. Yeah. Uh, that's fantastic. So we wish you, like I said, continued success. And, like, what I've been telling Joy, and I tell all my guests, yeah. please, what we like to do here with Sahara FM Radio is to develop a relationship. So whatever you guys are working on in the future or anything, uh, please feel free to come back. Even if you want to come back and guest co-host, you're welcome. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Let yeah. me know. I'm always in the city. You know, I'm everywhere. So whenever you yeah. want to just have a conversation, yeah, just so, let me know. Yeah, after the pageant, you can come, um, you know, we can, um, you know, do some guest co-hosting and stuff like that. Do you, still, do you see yourself? Because you, you talk to people already, like you said. Yeah, you, I, I, yeah. yeah I do a lot of conversation. And so I don't do radio, but I mean, maybe, maybe can't knock it till you try it. You yeah, know? maybe it's time to you know take it to the we'll take see. that platform to I the mean, next level. If you think I'm good, then that's good. So I yeah, have your trust approval. Me. So. Um, <laughs> even though I'm, I'm just some guy he picked off the street and everything. Oh, but, uh, come on, humble. <laughs> You're really humble. <laughs> uh, some people would think otherwise, but uh, uh, Royal, I thank you so much. Yes, it's been thank you. It's been show. a pleasure as well. Yeah, exactly. Nick, please let's give Royal a round of applause, man. <laughs> thank I think, you. I think Nick might have something because you something for you. You saw how many times he came in the studio. Nick, you need, do you have to come and check the cameras again or anything? <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Um, thank you, Rula. So there you have thank it. Thank uh, you. Rula Kolawale. Yeah, representing. Yes. Yeah. Um, it gets the states. Uh, the pageant is May 23rd. Please go to the website, www.missnigeria.eventbrite.com. Eventbrite.com. Miss Nigeria USA. Eventbrite.com. Get your tickets, man. It's at the Alvin. This is not no um, pageants in some high school halls and everything. This is at the <laughs> legendary Alvin Ailey Theater. So come out and support. And, you know, we'd like to see you there. And I have an iPad contents um, giveaway going on. Uh, you guys got to tune into the show next week for, for details. Uh, we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to be joined by writer and media strategist, the one and only Lovey Ajayi, live with the Humble Prince. We'll be right back. Vibes and Entertainment, in conjunction with Barron's...